Good morning, Baker Advanced Organizational Management students. So I hope everybody is having a great weekend. Um, looking forward to wrap up the weekend and back to work on Monday. I know it sounds like an unusual statement, but I do enjoy, you know, going to work. And that's a lot about what this class is and how we can apply what we're learning in leadership and management. So, um, you know, as you're doing these readings, as you're doing these activities, as you mentioned in your forum discussion post, it's hard not to think about how we want to try to implement or apply some of the things that we're learning in this course. So even as I was doing some reading uh, earlier this morning in uh, chapter 10, you know, like I see something that I like and I'm like, oh, I want to share this with my colleagues at work. Uh, in my field of higher education, I really like the example where they had students state what their goals were for the semester and earning their grades. And those that stated in one study versus those that did not state, kept it privately. Well, those that unstated and made it public did much better than those that did not. So I want to talk to that about my colleagues. So anyway, we're at uh, June 12th here, uh, June 13th tomorrow. But uh, for um, week two, uh, good job. Continue that with the forum discussions. Wrap that up. And then uh, we're going to rinse and repeat for next week too. Uh, I've adjusted the forum discussion uh, topic to align a little bit better with the readings. This week's readings, uh, I, will, well, I hope, are going to be a little bit more uh, lighter for you. So it'll give you a little bit of a break. So given that, I, I want you to start thinking about longer term projects in the course, like the Rayovac uh, case study in week six. So start looking at that now and start uh, doing some slight preparations that we, I would say we have a little bit lighter week this week. You know, start looking ahead to start working on those things so you're not felt so pressured to get so much done in that last final two weeks. So so again for this week you're going to continue with the uh, the my lab exercises you know with uh, problem solving, creativity, innovation, and uh, communication styles and then uh, you're going to have the forum discussion based on the reading, readings from Witten uh, chapters 8 to 10. I'll talk a little bit, some insights from those chapters, and uh, uh, Leading Change by John Carter. So I, I really like this book. He's like the guru from Harvard of uh, Leading Change. So you're going to at least be exposed to the first two chapters of that. And then uh, then you'll have an application assignment on Jim Mazzelli from Prudential. So again, you know, good just solid paragraph uh, responses to each um, uh, question. I think there's four of them out there from the, the chapter 10. So um, one thing as an aside, I, I did put out there as an article this week, um, you know, right now with, with the way the world is, there is a lot of change and it's concerning. There, there's, you know, gas prices are record highs. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. You got the war in Russia. Um, things don't necessarily look that great, you know, but uh, as leaders and managers, we, we have to adapt to those changes. So uh, one of the things I put out there was an interesting article about Janet Yellen. I admire the woman. She's probably the third or second most powerful person in the United States as the Treasury Secretary. And uh, the humility she had, because um, there's been some criticism on the Federal Reserve right now. We have such rapid inflation, and part of that was probably because they didn't put the brakes on um, with interest rates rising them sooner than later. But there's there a lot of unknown variables that she couldn't take into account especially like the war in Russia and uh, COVID and the supply chain issues. So it's, it's really throwing things out of whack. Uh, looking back, it's easy to say that, well, you should have been raising interest rates earlier to slow the aggregate demand down so we wouldn't have this rapid inflation. But uh, I really might admit that, you know, she made a mistake. And then that's a good thing as a leader. Yes, there are other variables that played in the role, but um, she was saying we got to do a better job at trying to predicting, you know, um, where our economy is heading, and you want to keep those balls stable. I call it juggling balls of inflation, unemployment, and GDP growth. But um, right now, you know, it's it's uh, unfortunate because it's really becoming unaffordable for a lot of Americans. And you, as managers and leaders in your organizations, how are you going to get them to continue to buy your product or service when they're having all these budget constraints and having to make tough choices? So. Uh, there's also concerns, you know, like how is this going to lead to recession? And if you look at the stock market this past week, I'm sure you do as business students, it can be depressing and discouraging just to see how much money is lost on paper. Uh, even in my own retirement account, it's it kind of scary, but we know that we're in this for the long run. So uh, you get a chance to just glance through that article. I think it's really relevant to our readings this week. So just some key highlights from this uh, 
the readings this week, especially Witten, uh, and chapter 10 kind of ties into Cotter with leading positive change. But, you know, some of my notes from chapter 8, you know, I looked at uh, empowering and engaging others, obviously setting goals, modeling, um, providing uh, support, fostering personal mastery experiences, emotional arousal, connected to outcomes, providing information, uh, providing resources, and uh, creating confidence. You know, you're going to read a lot about those and some different strategies. Uh, from Chapter 9, I really like the uh, reminder about the, uh, the teams and Tuckman about the uh, forming, norming, storming, and performing, is that all teams kind of go through these stages. And, you know, I work with a team at work. Um, we do have one relatively new person, so, you know, there's always adjustments, you know. But uh, the ultimate goal, of, like, for us, you know, it's academic outcomes for the students. You know, how are we going to do a better job or how are we going to train uh, tutors better in my field to, to improve those outcomes and how do we get students to come to the tutoring. So um, don't forget about that. You as students have access to Baker Tutoring too. So if you want help with papers or something like that, contact those resources. You have academic support or contact the library. Um, they are help, they're there to help you. And, and actually the library's put a lot of great resources out there uh, for helping with writing business papers. So uh, finally with, with the leading change, to kind of wrap that up, um, I, I really like to, uh, in some of the readings this week with uh, Lee Iacocca, um, you know, there used to be a thing where you would, you would burn your last mortgage payment. Uh, I still have about four and a half years to pay off my house, and I, I thought about that when I was glancing through the readings. Maybe I, I will have a little party with my sons and wife and just burn that last mortgage payment when that it comes. Because it's, it's kind of one of those things you celebrate, you know, at least uh, you still have to pay uh, escrow and taxes and all that stuff, property taxes and insurance. But... Uh, at least you have that money freed up from the cash flow perspective. But I thought it was interesting that I, Lee Iacocca, uh, when he turned things around in the 80s, that he uh, saved one last car in the lot, and, and they burned that as a symbol um, you know, after they had sold all those other cars, to say, hey, we got through that time period, and they were moving on. So uh, as you do these readings, you're going to read a lot about these different case studies and applications, but also think about, like I said, the, the current environment and how this applies to your work situation or your organization too. So, but uh, you're gonna look at a lot of those things and the recommendations that they apply. Uh, I really like the uh, kind of start at page 452 to your text of 460 plus. You know, the five skills was the steps in climbing a positive uh, uh, positivity, great readiness for a uh, positive change, articulate a vision of abundance. Uh, generating commitment to the vision and then creating uh, sustainability for that change. So you're going to kind of see that outline in Cotter's book. So other than that, um, keep up the good job with forum discussions. I, I was able to jump in again to, to respond to everyone. So as long as I feel I can do that, I've had some a uh, little bit of leeway in the summertime more than uh, maybe the fall and the spring semester and things get really crazy for me. But um, you know, one of the exchanges we've experienced in where I work at community colleges. Uh, during COVID, uh, community college enrollment dropped for a fifth, and our enrollment in the summertime at MCC Longview is a third of what it was last year. So we're adapting to these changes. I'm taking this time period to kind of revamp and prepare for the fall, which we're expecting the enrollment to be up. But, uh, you know, we're always dealing with change, you know, but we're, we're trying to do the right things and stay positive. Uh, to meet, meet those strategic visions and goals. So other than that, uh, have a great week, and I'll, I'll jump in there later in the week in the forum discussions. But again, if you do have any questions, uh, do email me, and I'll get back to you that day or the next day at the latest. So have a great week, and we'll talk to you online.